Well, there are two kinds of uh, policy issues. One are the short-run uh, issues, and that is uh, the importance of restoring a higher level of economic activity in the advanced countries, in particular in this country, in the U.S., and the, the fact that there will have to be uh, some innovative approaches to policy. The simple uh, dependence on conventional monetary policy, uh, not to be abandoned, of course, but it seems to have come to its limits and one has to move on either to direct fiscal policy or to innovative ways of dealing with, uh, with money and credit. And related to that, I think that uh, another interesting uh, idea with direct policy implications that has come up is uh, another old idea reviving again which is that instead of thinking simply about uh, purely monetary matters the credit mechanism the way the credit mechanism works and and uh, mediates between savers and investors and creates credit in productive uses is both nationally and internationally uh, terribly important and we need some uh, uh, some new ideas because our own, in this country right now, the credit mechanism for small and medium-sized enterprises has frozen. Uh, bank lending to industry is still falling in the U.S. the last time I looked at the data. Well, uh, uh, first of all, I think that uh, the easiest part of that in the U.S., uh, and that doesn't mean it's easy, but easier, it might be to uh, look for ways in which uh, the government or the financial system, the private financial system, can be induced to extend credit to small and medium-sized businesses, which right now can't get it and are not expanding employment. And, and uh, there is a tradition that smaller businesses are a, a good way of generating initial employment for people who are out of, uh, out of work. So I think one has to look for, uh, on, the, on the credit side, uh, new credit channels. Whether they're public or private or some kind of mixture of those will take some uh, working out. Uh, on the fiscal policy side, where I think there is a lot of latent power, the, what has come out of this conference is that the, the limitations are primarily political. Uh, we have created an enormous increase in public debt in the U.S., that's, that's pretty clear. Uh, we are certainly not at the limits of the possibility of public debt because the federal government at the moment doesn't have any trouble selling its uh, selling its bonds uh, but the the any aggressive fiscal policy would entail uh, still a bigger buildup of debt which will have to be settled in the longer run but uh, the public and the Congress are not prepared for that and uh, all I can hope for is some education on that level but it's politically very difficult The question of education and the role of education in, in economic growth of middle income and poor or low income countries arose at the very end. And there, I was, uh, the thought in my mind was that we, by we I mean economists and people who talk about this sort of thing in that way, uh, uh, tend to think of education as a, a thing whereas there are lots of kinds of education. We tend to measure education by input, not output. We count how many years uh, uh, people have been in school, 
Uh, uh, I was pretty well educated, but there's a lot of time that I was in school that I wasn't listening. I was pitching pennies in the back of the room or something like that. And there's a lot that I was taught that was utterly useless. Uh, and I would, I think that instead of worrying so much about quantities of education, we ought to be thinking about the content of the education. What is it that uh, uh, primary school or secondary school kids in poor and middle income countries need to know uh, uh, not necessarily what they're being taught. And by the way, the same, the same thing holds for uh, advanced countries and the U.S. Uh, our, our natural measure of our success in generating educa an educated population is the fraction of the age group that's in college. Uh, I would be very interested in other kinds of post-secondary education uh, that are uh, skill-based, vocational education, that would equip people for the jobs that are likely to be available. That's going to require that employers be involved in the planning of that sort of education. So that, that's a whole, for, for this country, and perhaps for much of the world, that's a wholly new idea. Thank you.